Okay, I want to do a uh, back to basics on something you probably have in your pocket right now. Uh, it's down in here. It's a camera. So this is an iPhone and there is a camera. In fact, this one has two cameras. It has three cameras. Uh, two cameras in the back and one camera on the front. So yeah, three, three cameras. So <laughs> uh, yeah, they're everywhere now. So uh, I've mentioned before that I did electronics early in my career and then I went to do optics. Well, um, I did um, optics, but I also did a lot of what's called electro-optics or optoelectronics, which is kind of the marriage of optics and electronics together. Um, and something that does optics and electronics together are cameras, uh, digital cameras. You need, you need both lenses and, and, and you need to capture light and do things with light, but then you need to process it with electronics and stuff. So um, let's talk about how you do that. Uh, so uh, I was involved in uh, what are known as CMOS image sensors. And um, there's different ways to make image sensors, but you can make them out of CMOS. And so there's a chip, and in that chip there are, there's an array of pixels. So you have a you know 10 megapixel camera or 20 megapixel camera. There's there's 20 million little pixels, and each of those pixels are you know, they're red, green, and blue. You know they're way down in there. They're real tiny. Well, how do they work? How do the pixels work? So that's going to be the the topic today. Um, the individual pixel, not how the whole camera works, not how the processing, everything like that. Then let's talk about how does the light get into? How do you convert light into into electricity? How do you, how do you do that? Okay. So you can imagine that um, there is some structure, and the light comes into the structure and it and it and it does things. Okay. And um, we can come back to this, but I just kind of want to give you a quick glimpse is the pixels need to be right next to each other. So this pixel, 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 right? A red one, a green one, and a blue one, red one, green one, a blue one. They just keep repeating, right? And there's all of these, all of these pixels. And um, we're going to be uh, making a silicon wafer. Uh, we're making an IC. And ICs are a bunch, it's almost like a PC board, but you put layers and layers and layers. So if you're building a, a transistor, you need to put an N layer and then a P layer, then an N layer, and you need to have insulators in there, and then you need to have metal, metal wires going all over the place. So I've taken um, macro photography of, of uh, chips before. I took one of an 8080 microprocessor. I've taken some of some op amps and transistors and things. And you can see that, that, that integrated circuits are very interesting. They're, they're all like a PC board. They're all, all in, integrated and stuff. So imagine that you have a photodiode, and then you need to put electronics on top of that. And so there's a bunch of metal. So these little dark things here are metal. And then you need to get light in there. So the photodiodes aren't on top. They're on the bottom. And so it's hard to get light down in there. There's almost a little, a little a channel that you have to get the light into. It's it's kind of it's kind of uh, tricky to get that to get that light in there. So what they do is they actually deposit little lenslets. Okay, these are little lenslets on top. So when the light comes in straight, it then gets focused. Okay, it gets it gets focused down. And when it gets focused down, then it's able to buy, you know, avoid all of these metal structures, and it can go down through the center and then get down to the photodiode. And so your 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 cell phone camera has all these little lenslets in it. These are called micro lenses, right? Micro lens. And so yeah, it's got a whole bunch of little micro lenses, and they and they get back down on there. Now it's really inconvenient that the photo sensor is at the bottom. You know, that's a lot like the human eye. The human eye has a retina, which is where the light is actually uh, captured, but it has a whole bunch of blood vessels and stuff on top of the retina. There's actually a bunch of junk on top, and the light has to get through all of that junk before it hits the retina. Um, and your brain sees all that junk when you're first born. It sees all that junk. but as you grow up, you learn that that junk is always there all the time, and so your brain learns to ignore it. There's certain ways you can actually get people to see that junk, but uh, light has to go through all that junk to get to your retina. It's kind of weird. Now, in, a, in, in, in most animals, that's true. It has to go through all this junk to get to the bottom, except for the octopus. The octopus got it the right way around. Uh, the octopus has the photosensor on top, and then all the junk underneath it. Okay, but only the octopus. That's the only animal I know that got it right way, right way around. So, the people designing these uh, 
uh, circuits said, well, maybe we can do better than this. Maybe we can do what the octopus did. So they build these things exactly like this. Now, remember that there's a big silicon wafer. There's a bunch of silicon underneath it. It's not this thin. There's a whole bunch of silicon underneath. And this is just the, the thin little layer on top of this big chunk of silicon. And they said, well, let's grind all that off. Let's put it in a grinding machine and we'll just grind it, grind it, grind it, grind it, grind it. We'll grind it right down to the very, very edge of this photodiode. And then light can come in the other side. And so that's exactly what they did here. They, they ground it down, and then they turned, they turned the wafer upside down, and then now they can, put the, they can put the little structures on top, and they don't have to go through all that junk. So they, they basically mimic the octopus, and they, they flipped it upside down. So uh, you'll see some of these um, today. Most of them are this way. Most of them are called front illuminated, and this one's called back illuminated. Um, and anyway, so there's, there's two different ways to do this. Um, but let's talk about one of these pixels, okay? So this, this is three pixels. We want to talk just about one pixel. What, what is inside one pixel? How does that work? Right. So, um, so here's here's one pixel, okay? Uh, so this is what the uh, this is what the uh, IC looks like. So this is one pixel, and then there'll be a neighbor here, and there'll be a neighbor here, and a neighbor here, right? It's all tiled together, a whole bunch of them. And this is one pixel. There's a big photodiode. You need a big photodiode because you want to have as much light as possible hitting that photodiode. And then you need to have wires to interconnect things. So these are wires. And, uh, and then you need some other stuff. So, so this is kind of what a, what a pixel looks like. So this is a one pixel. And I'm going to show you what's called a 3T, okay, 3T, a 3T image, image sensor, a 3D image pixel, okay. 3T stands for three transistors. In this mess, there's three transistors, okay. There's one over here, there's one over there, and there's one over there, okay. So there's these, these three pixels, okay. They're marked M, M1, M2, and M3, right, so uh, three pixels. And then a photodiode. So three, three, three transistors. Okay, they're not transistors; they're FETs. So I guess it's an FET transistor, right? Field effect transistor. So um, we're going to talk about this circuit, um, and this is not drawn very nice, but this is the this is the schematic for what's in a pixel. So let's look at a better schematic. You always know that I like schematics that are drawn; that makes more sense. Okay. So here's one uh, that somebody did that's drawn and it makes more sense. All right. So what do we need? First of all, we need a photodiode. Okay, so this is the photodiode. The light comes in here and uh, some voltage builds up on this node here. Okay, and so we shine the light on there and then we get a voltage and then we need to read the voltage. So we hook up our voltmeter. Oh, wait a minute, we don't have a voltmeter. We need to send it somewhere in the system that has a voltmeter. And remember, there's 10 million pixels, so you can't have 10 million voltmeters. You have to multiplex. You have to have some type of scanning uh, array. So you need to like have a whole bunch of relays. So you know, if you have uh, maybe a thousand pixels in a row, you need to have a thousand relays to go click, 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 click to, to connect to each one of the uh, each one of the uh, diodes. And so um, that's sort of what they do. Okay. So uh, this transistor is actually a switch, okay? We can just redraw it, okay? It's a switch. That's all this one is, is a switch. And then here's one wire that goes the length vertically in the sensor. It's called the column line, okay? So if you have, where's my picture of a, where's my picture of an image sensor? So if you have an image sensor, then every single pixel vertically is connected with wire. There's one wire that goes all the way down. And so when a pixel is being used, that little switch connects it to the, connects it to the wire. So, and then there's, 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 a, there's a one wire per column. So we're gonna read it a row at a time. So one row connects all of its switches to the column lines. And then the next row connects all of its switches. And then the next line collects, connects all of its switches. So you need these little switches. You need these little relays that connect you to this. And then down here at the bottom is the voltmeter, okay? All of this little circuitry down in here, that's kind of the voltmeter. And, uh, 
it's more complicated than that, but of course. But it's like a little voltmeter down here, right? And so we're gonna read the voltage on our, on our photodiode. And we need these little switches so we can do multiplexing. So that's what this transistor does, okay? So this transistor does switching. And this is called row select, okay? So when you select a row, it's going to turn this transistor on, and then you'll connect to the column, okay? So we need two wires. We need one wire for the column, and we need another wire for the row select, okay? So we need a, we need a wire down here for the gate to turn on the switch, okay? So we need two wires, this one and this one. All right, then we need a photodiode. Okay, great. Now, the photodiode uh, is kind of a finicky thing, right? You don't really want to put a voltmeter on it because you'll destroy its contents. You need something really, really high impedance uh, to measure a photodiode. In fact, you kind of need a trans impedance amplifier. I talked about that once in a video, but you kind of need a really, really, really high impedance on this transistor so you don't upset it. It doesn't have all that much charge in it. It's actually quite small. And so we're going to use this transistor as a source follower, okay? So that's all it is, is a source follower, okay? Gate, drain, source, okay? So we're going to uh, read the voltage of the photodiode with this high impedance FET, and then we're going to turn it on and off. We're going to select it with this transistor, okay? So that's all it is. Source follower, switch. Okay, we're, we're, and we need VDD. We need some type of voltage, okay? So that's another, that's another wire, okay? And so we need another wire. So let's put a wire here, okay? So we have another wire for our, for our VDD. Okay, so now we have wire, wire, wire. Okay, great. Um, now uh, we have one transistor left, okay? So that's two transistors, but it's a 3T. So we have one transistor left. And that's a reset transistor. And this photodiode is seeing things all the time, and you don't want it to see it all the time. You, you want to take snapshots. You want to, you want to have a shutter. You want, you want to only take pictures when you want it to take pictures. So you need some way of turning this on and off and enabling it and disabling it. And the way to think of photodiodes is like a bucket, okay? And the light that falls onto a, the photosensor is like rain. And the, the, the bucket's job is to collect the rain. It's like a rain gauge, right? And the longer you wait, the more the bucket fills up. So the longer you wait is the shutter speed. If you expose a long time, then the bucket fills up longer. If you show, show, expose a short time, then the bucket doesn't fill up as much, okay? So you've got these buckets. Well, you need to empty the bucket once in a while. You need to start over, and that's taking a picture, right? You need to empty the bucket, collect as much as, as you want, read the contents, like taking a ruler in here and measuring the depth of the water, and then dumping it out and, tr and doing it again, okay? Well, this is the dump it out, okay? And what this does is it, is it shorts out the photodiode, it, it puts VDD right across it, and it gets rid of all of the charge that's inside this photodiode. And then when you disconnect it, then it's ready to go. Then it's, then it's like a bucket and it starts collecting, it co starts collecting charge, okay? And so this is the reset. Reset. Okay, and it can be a row, a row reset. Okay, so you're going to reset a row. So the way that you're going to do this is you can do it one row at a time. You're going to reset it, collect the collect the light, read it out, and then go to the next one. Okay, so dunk, dunk, dunk. So you're going to do row by row by row by row by row. Okay. Anyway, so this is the 3T design, and we need a reset line now. We need a, another wire. Okay, so we have a wire here for our reset. So we have a, a reset wire, a voltage wire, a column wire, and a row select wire. So those are all of the wires. Remember we saw wires over here uh, on this one? Okay, and so this is, our, this is our reset. This is our reset transistor, okay? And so this is our reset line here, RST. Uh, this is our, our voltage, this is, this is the voltage here. And then uh, we need our row select, and so this is a row. Uh, uh, this is the reset, and this is the select, and then uh, this is the output. Okay, so this is the column output, and then you repeat. Um, so anyway, uh, there you go. That's the simplicity of a photosensor.
a 3T photo sensor. There are 5T designs, 4T designs, there's all kinds of designs, but very, very common is a, th is a 3T design. Because you need, to fit all this, you need to fit all this stuff in a small space. So the more transistors you add, you're, you're limiting the amount of photodiode you can have. So you want to not have too many transistors. Um, so this is, the, this is the minimum count. You need at least three.